in a village that is so beautiful and looks very clean. On a morning so cool it makes every inhabitant happy. But behind that beauty does not apply to such a man. Because that morning he saw many frames in the middle of his farm, seen a lot of chickens that died suddenly. Then the man was called Zhao Dagen. Zhao Dagen was counting the number of dead chickens. Then after that, Zhao Dagen began to check the best place to bury the poor animals. After a short time, Zhao Dagen found a certain area and started digging. But while he was digging, he was surprised to find a stone tile where the statue was kept. But after that, the man moved very quickly to retrieve items from the excavation. However, after Zhao Dagen picked up the green object from the ground, Zhao Dagen became very happy, and he believed from an object he found it. If he sells, it will make him rich. However, suddenly a drop of blood from the man's finger fell onto the statue, and because of that, he started behaving strangely. Then it made him very surprised. Zhao Dagen unexpectedly from the relic flashed light from his two eyes, and it was like an unknown purple ray. Then the gleam from the eyes of the relic shot straight into Xiao Dagen's eyes. Then after that, Xiao Dagen dropped the statue and made it lose consciousness. Then after that, suddenly in front of him was a god. And he said that now he was already the disciple of the heavenly noble who possessed the ability of ten thousand poisons, after receiving the supreme art of possessing the poison skill. Then he will replace him. Later, after a few Xiao Dagen woke up with a headache while seeing the statue broken, Xiao Dagen didn't have time to start feeling sad, because he noticed that there was a girl standing not far from him. He calmly looked at her, then realized that her friend Zhou Yu Yin was standing in front of her. But after that, Zhou Yu Yin reminded Xiao Dagen of his family's 10,000 yuan debt. After his words, Xiao Dagen became angry and warned Zhou Yu Yin that if she continued to insult her family, he would not guarantee that he would harm her. However, at some point Xiao Dagen noticed that he saw something that the ordinary one would not. Xiao Dagen realized that this supernatural power was given to him from that god before. Xiao Dagen carefully examined Zhou Yu Yin. Dan looks at his body and realizes that he is being poisoned by some unknown poison. Then, Zhou Yu Yin was flustered by the fact that Xiao Dagen was mocking her and started asking her what she was thinking. Then, after that, Xiao Dagen started laughing at him, after telling him everything. He didn't believe Xiao Dagen's words because the qualified doctors at the hospital found nothing in his body. Then, Xiao Dagen saw the problem he had. However, after hearing Zhou Yu Yin's clear indication of illness, he started to believe Xiao Dagen's words. Xiao Dagen quickly began to share what he knew. After learning that Zhou Yu Yin might die, Zhou Yu Yin began to agree with Xiao Dagen in every possible way to give him mercy so that he helps him. After the word spoken to him, Xiao Dagen refused to help Zhou Yu Yin, unless he knelt down and begged Xiao Dagen to help him. Upon hearing this, Zhou Yu Yin started to get very angry at Xiao Dagen for saying such hurtful words to her. But after a while he realized that he was in a difficult situation, on the verge between life and death. Zhou Yu Yin was still kneeling and begging for mercy to be healed from the effects of the poison. Xiao Dagen saw that Zhou Yu Yin was standing in a submissive pose and pitied him. Then after that, Xiao Dagen picked up some kind of lump from the ground which turned out to be chicken droppings. Afterwards, Xiao Dagen said that it would suppress the effects of the poison and guarantee Zhou Yu Yin a restful sleep. Without any tricks, he didn't believe Xiao Dagen's words. He thought it was a lie. Then Zhou Yu Yin became furious, but any fool would faint after eating it. But Xiao Dagen convinced Zhou Yu Yin that actually chicken manure was needed not to neutralize the poison in the body, but to suppress its effects. Then Xiao Dagen explained that he didn't lose anything. Then after that he also asked Zhou Yu Yin for a total of 3,000 yuan. Then, until the next day, if there is a positive effect, then he will help her again. After hearing the words spoken by Xiao Dagen, Zhou Yu Yin had no choice but to agree. But after that, at the same time, a middle-aged man in work clothes and carrying tools was passing not far from them. Then Zhou Yu Yin began to take the medicine given to Xiao Dagen from his hand, and Zhou Yu Yin started eating it. 
Zhou Yuyin was clearly unhappy with what happened, and she definitely didn't like the taste of the poison suppressant in her body. Then he chewed it for a long time, and before he could swallow it. He saw the same man in work clothes looking at Zhou Yuyin who was eating it. Then he started screaming throughout the forest. That Zhou Yuyin ate chicken shit. Then after that, on the other hand, after hard work, Xiao Dagen was tired thinking about resting for a while and going to try out his newly acquired God-bestowed ability. After a while, Xiao Dagen started to reflect on the incident happily. That news had spread throughout the village. After throwing the working tool to the ground in his yard, Xiao Dagen started to spread his arms. Then the chickens around him started to see him. After preparing yourself carefully, Xiao Dagen began to test his abilities. Then, with all his strength and fear, crushed all the chickens that surrounded him. Xiao Dagen raised the dust around him, seeing that he was creating a strong airflow. Disciple Wang noticed how all the plants not far from him were wilting. He thought that it was better not to use such power. Among those people he is aware of, he may inadvertently injure them while sitting on the ground. Xiao Dagen began to reflect that he couldn't fully control his new skill. But after sitting like that for a while, Xiao Dagen regained his sight and sat in a more comfortable position, and he concentrated on the man. His eyes and thought that he needed to remember the vision that came to him for the first time. Then as soon as possible to learn more information about his strength. A little more time passed and now Xiao Dagen was sitting without being bothered by anything. And just think about the coming vision in the darkness. But after that, God Wang came, and so much red energy radiating, so it looks like a blazing fire. Then after that, the God told the man that he needed to absorb 10,000 poisons learned to control from all kinds of creatures. And then he finally reached the highest level that ordinary people could only dream of becoming immortal. Wang Do added that there are nine levels of purification. Xiao Dagen was shocked by what he heard, because he didn't think that it was necessary to learn so many levels of power. After carefully thinking about what and how to do it, Xiao Dagen at the same time decided to start training him to the next level. However, Xiao Dagen came out of his mind. When he opened his eyes, he saw that dawn had come and noticed that his power level had increased. The young disciple clearly saw that his strength had increased markedly after the first exercise. Make conclusions that this was Ming Kai's level. After a little more reflection. The man realized that Kai was actually from Wang, and it was a skill that allowed him to see all kinds of ailments through his eyes. He tested the skill on himself by looking at his hands. Then, Xiao Dagen concentrated and looked at the results. Everything looks clearer compared to yesterday's results. Then, after that, he heard someone walking behind him. Xiao Dagen turned around and saw him walking towards him. After hearing pleasant words towards Xiao Dagen, was surprised and proud. Noticing that the medicine yesterday was working well, Zhou Yuyin thanked Xiao Dagen and said that all of her symptoms had disappeared. However, his answer did not please Zhou Yuyin very much, because chicken droppings only suppress the effects of the poison. He offers more money for his treatment, adding that his family is not in poverty, so that his personal doctor doesn't worry. Xiao Dagen said that once Zhou Yuyin transferred the money to his account, he would immediately start his treatment. Zhou Yuyin took turns reaching into her bag and finally found a telephone transfer of thirty zero 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 yuan, which obviously surprised Xiao Dagen, because he had never seen that much money before. Feel good about the fund. He received Xiao Dagen's points into his shack, and had Zhou Yuyin go over there to start the maintenance that was already in the hut. Xiao Dagen stopped him from taking off his clothes. Because before the examination, it is usually necessary to undress. Xiao Dagen, who was covering his face with his hands, told Zhou Yuyin to just close her eyes without opening them. Until the end of the session, he also extended his left hand forward, about her agreement with the man. Then, after that, Zhou Yuyin took advantage of Wang Do's level in Joyu. Xiao Dagen saw the poisonous worms on his body; therefore, he is poison. In order to get rid of the parasite, Xiao Dagen decided to use the poison control art of the lowest stage. After touching the inflammatory agent, it eventually flares up. When the poison worm moved to the wrist, Xiao Dagen warned Zhou Yuyin that she might feel a bit more pain. 
so that he will be patient. After making a neat incision, Zhao Dagen removed the parasite from Zhou Yuyin's palm. At the end of the session, the patient opened his eyes, saw a poisonous worm in front of him, and screamed in disgust. Then after that, he immediately took out that disgusting worm. After that, however, the man started to explain to that person that the worms were the source of Zhou Yuyin's illness. After removing it, Xiao Dagen will get rid of the parasite. After a little reflection, the doctor came to the conclusion that the patient was naked, because only this type of worm lives. And also he asked where the wound was. After drawing conclusions, Zhao Dagen determined that Zhou Yuyin was there. Then after that, he considered an unusual option. Zhou Yuyin in turn started to deny everything, but accidentally let slip that he was there with her. Xiao Dagen called that a stupid girl, adding that the rumors turned out to be true. It turned out that the person didn't know about the rumors circulating among people. Xiao Dagen decided to tell him what everyone was saying behind his back. On this note, their dialogue stops. At Dr. Xiao Dagen, Dojang escorted Zhou Yu Yin out of her hut, adding that he definitely had to go to the hospital for additional checks and put a bandage on Zhou Yu Yin, then left Zhou Yu Yin. He promised that he remembered Xiao Dagen's words, that she managed to get the truth from him about her adventures. After Zhou Yu Yin's complete departure, he rejoiced at his earnings and decided that he would eventually earn more money for his next life and make her happy. Then all his relatives and people can also manage the whole village to improve the welfare of their family. Suddenly looking at the ground, the excited Xiao Dagen quickly became shocked when he saw a gloomy aura deep in the ground. After what he saw, Xiao Dagen came to a conclusion that it was because of this prostitute that his chickens ended their lives badly. The man decided to check out the nearby mountains. Then, after that, he turned around. Xiao Dagen stood in a stupor for a while. He saw that the two new mountains were more poisonous than their peaks. Around, Xiao Dagen decided to take a look at the mountain occupied by him. Jubai approached him. Xiao Dagen was very surprised because the mountain looked like feng shui. After a bit of reflection, Xiao Dagen saw a poisonous insect on the ground from which he came to a conclusion that he could breed poisonous creatures in this place, replace the chicken to increase his minkai level, the art of controlling poison at its lowest stage, but realized that those on the mountain were only more poisonous creatures. Xiao Dagen thought about how to conquer this peak. Then after that, on the other side, in a village seen two people walking together discussing paying debts, one of them said, that Uncle Lu was the last to give all the sums. But then, the same person noticed that he had completely forgotten about Uncle Ju's debt of 10,000. Before he could finish, the man interrupted the man turned out to be Xiao Dagen. Soon we learn from their dialogue that these two are father and son. After calming his father down, the man said, that he would solve everything himself and somehow able to earn the right amount of money. In conclusion, his father's son noted that it was getting dark and it was time to go home because Xiao Dagen's mother was waiting for them there. Gray, monotonous houses form a small village. There is a beautiful golden sunset in the background in one of the houses Xiao Dagen's entire family, including himself, is sitting at the table. They all eat dinner together at the family circle simultaneously, thanking the keeper of the hearth for preparing a wonderful dinner. After finishing, Xiao Dagen thanks his mother once again for his added delicious food that he had eaten heartily after doing all his after-dinner business. The man ran out of the house saying that he had gone to the poultry farm and that he would be back soon as an old man. In response, they wished him good luck, and he looked after himself on the farm not because you never know what might happen. There the night passed, and soon morning came. Morning begins for Xiao Dagen. At his hut in the forest after a certain time, the rooster among the chickens starts to wake up everyone living near him. But at the same time, the door started knocking loudly in such a way that the door that closed the territory flew out with a bang simultaneously frightening all living things. The poor birds scattered all over the yard were frightened by the surprise. And a loud noise enters the area we see clearly. A disgruntled man in a pink suit 
with a certain folder he held in his hand, previously known as Xu Xiang Zhang. The richest man in the village had also become a curmudgeon and a vengeful man. At the same time, Xiao Dagen, who had not fully woken up, came to the noise that was clearly not expecting guests at such an early hour. But opened his eyes, the man was very surprised Zhu Bao Pai stood up, as if nothing had happened before, and shouted at Xiao Dagen above. From the sound of her simultaneously shouting offensive words towards him, Xiao Dagen had no choice but to only listen to the words he heard addressed to her. Because he didn't expect this man to come to him at all with such obvious dissatisfaction, the man asked Xu Bap Hai about what he forgot here and what he needed from Xiao Dagen. The man replied that he had heard that Xiao Dagen had gone to another village to repay the debt and asked Xiao Dagen about when he would repay the debt to the Zhu family. Then after that, Xiao Dagen was obviously not happy about the situation. He started to think more and more about why he had borrowed money from this heinous man. But Xiao Dagen had no choice but to say that he would soon pay off all debts, including this one. But at one point, the man didn't like the man. The fact that Xiao Dagen was evasive kept saying that he would promptly and quickly repay the debt. Although he didn't do it himself, Jubapai also sent that person out of his shack, which made Xiao Dagen stand up in confusion. A moment later, Xiao Dagen asked Uncle Zhu why he was forced to take his things away from his farm. Because it turned out later that Xiao Dagen's father arranged with Uncle Zhu to take all the documents and rights to use the chicken farm on account to cover all the debts directed their way at this time. Xiao Dagen was overcome with anger, and he was furious that his poultry farm was sold for only 10,000 yuan because that would not be able to cover even the cost of the land deal. Seo also couldn't believe a word Uncle Zhu Xiao Dagen's father did not discuss such an important matter with him. But at one point they met the broken place of the door of Xiao Dagen's parents. But after that, Xiao Dagen's mother suddenly stopped talking while shouting at him. What did he forget here? The man was very surprised. But also happy that our parents came to him so early, Zubapai himself was also surprised, just not as happy as Xiao Dagen. Before he could take anything, the man asked Chang Zhu Ying's mother, Xiao Dagen, why is he screaming so loudly? A little later, Xu claims that he agreed to use their poultry farming to forget what they owed him. But Zhang Chofin suddenly interrupted the man. However, he said it wasn't like that at all because he said he would just trade the promissory note for land for something else. He also added that he was jealous that their poultry farm was profitable, and therefore he would take from the poultry farm for free. Uncle Zhu had a reason for this. He said he would give up all rights to set up new also in return for receipt. He would take the whole poultry farm for himself, hearing that Uncle Zhu also gave his burrow to the new one. Xiao Dagen was somewhat shocked by what he had heard that Mewtwo Mountain was much bigger than theirs, with poultry farming, and therefore Xiao Dagen's family could multiply much bigger than they currently had. Also, Uncle Zhu noted that because of the big company and the great competition, he has been keeping the finished chicken farm for a long time. And in order not to waste any extra time, Xiao Dagen heard that Uncle Zhu would give them a new mountain to start with, to rejoice in his heart. However, as Xu for once came with good news to their farm, but everything depended on Zhang Zhu's sudden decision for everyone. Xiao Dagen stops them from arguing, just in case asking again if Uncle Zhu is really going to give an IOW in exchange for their farm hearing. That it was a case of the man agreeing to the man's terms, but only if he allowed him to sign the contract for both of Xiao Dagen Mountain's parents, who just heard that he agreed. Then, after that, he was surprised that their son agreed to the terms of the mother's contract, first rejecting Chu's offer. But son quickly calms him down, saying that he can trust him, promising him that he won't let him down. Reassured Zhang Zhe told him not to worry about his son's choice, as he looked quite confident than usual. After a brief disagreement, Zubapai immediately took out the contract from the folder for Xiao Dagen to sign it, taking the securities. The protagonist read it carefully while wondering that Uncle Zhu was very ready to buy a poultry farm there. After reading the text, Zhao Dagen once again asked the man if he was lying, if it was true that he would give all the rights to the mountain. After signing the contract, Zuba Pai confirmed what he heard adding, that if Zhao Dagen can't pay the contract next week, 
he will take the contract back. The name itself from then on the poultry farm was fully owned by the family, and the buyer only needed to provide a point of interest. At the same time, unexpectedly for everyone, someone shouted something towards Xiao Dagen. Everyone in the yard looked back and saw a small group of people there, and after standing in front of everyone at the head, a young man immediately started, because he looked too confident for the new owner of the two new mountains to also notice. That Xiao Dagen has a higher education, but he still obtained the rights to Mount Utsai. He laughed from here. We later found out that it was the same young man. This is the son of Zhu Balpai, a lazy man, lazy and just one of the main hooligans of Deji Village. He heard that it was going to get right to Newtown Mountain at the same time he started laughing with the man, because there were a large number of poisonous insects on Xiao Dagen Mountain, and that in turn cheered him on, because the mountain is yet to be fully explored and there is likely a lot of unexplored treasure there. After hearing this, she starts laughing uncontrollably at him. After one made fun of the others, Xu Yu decided to push Xiao Dagen as he employed agricultural specialists who carefully inspected the mountain, concluding that other than venomous snakes and insects, there was nothing of value there. Sai Odan Zhang hearing such words angered the Zhu family, only can make fun of others who think they are the coolest in their village because of their connections and finances. Treasure, for half an hour everyone who came with him, including himself, started laughing out loud for no one could safely set foot on the new city mountain. However, in the end, he decided to agree to Xiao Dagen's proposal, saying that if he finds at least something valuable, he will stand in a dog pose and defecate in front of everyone. But if Xiao Dagen failed to meet the treasure-finding requirements, then he himself would have to meet the aforementioned requirements. After a short conversation with his parents, Xiao Dagen still decided to teach Xu Yu a lesson. The rich bully was waiting for Xiao Dagen's arrival without anything. Mount Baru Tao stepped to the foot of Mount Zile, laughing at him, because he still didn't know about his crushing defeat since the beginning of their dispute. After thinking about it, Xiao Dagen convinced himself that if it was not the power given by God to Wang Du, then in that place he could have noticed himself in the tree closest to the man, he saw a huge spider and then an escalopendra. Thinking that his wish of the much bigger snakes and insects on Mount Newtown had come true at the same time, he also remembered about the contract to own the mountain, and that the mountain was now his. Xiao Dagen used the power of a thousand poisons, and at the same time with all his strength, rushed towards the treasure finding him running around the forest waterfall. Various impassable places at extreme speeds beyond the control of ordinary people. Xiao Dagen finally reached the designated place. Before Xiao Dagen, a dark cave appeared overgrown with long vines. And Moss entered the cave. The following image appeared before the joyful and joyful man a dark cave, where there seems to be nothing but in fact an attractive flower with red petals becomes a treasure trove of exclaims. That this treasure is worth a lot of money, Zhao Dagen accidentally broke the roots of this plant, is defended by facts. That the price of ginseng has fallen sharply. Zhao Dagen also noticed that the color of the plant depended on the fact that it had been fueled by Newtown Mountain for many years, and in turn, poisonous. But luckily, Xiao Dagen was able to use the inheritance he received from God Wang. Due to refining the ginseng at the same time, Xiao Dagen used one of his skills on the plant to eradicate the poison from it. After gathering its contents into the small ball, Xiao Dagen began to ponder whether to absorb poison to increase its abilities or not. However, realizing that he didn't have any more time, he waved his hand. So throw the ball against the wall while many people gather on the farm, Xiao Dagen to watch Zia's loser performance but they didn't know yet that he would still be the winner at the same time. Chu Yu decided to convince Xiao Dagen's parents by adding that he's not coming back, and if he did, it would be in his coffin for his funeral. However, Chu Yu Kai didn't have to rejoice for long because Xiao Dagen was already standing behind him taunting the arrogant youth. Seeing that Xiao Dagen had nothing in his hands, Chu Yu immediately started mocking Xiao Dagen because he had not found the treasure. 
Xiaodag and Donqing decided this time to avoid ridicule from the family. Because Zhu Yu taunts and hates not only Xiao Dagen, but also his parents at the same time Xiao Dagen put his hand in his jacket pocket, and in awe took out the treasure he had found raising it above him. Understand the incomprehensible. He asked Sai or why he had to be a treasure, because in his eyes, you have to be really stupid to buy this potion. For not having finished his speech to the end, his father's heavy fist was directed at Zhu Yu, which caused the victim to fly away. A young man who didn't understand anything asked his father. Why did he hit him without giving a clear answer, sent his son home to make sure that the chicken had laid their eggs? Xiao Dagen stopped the man. Because his son did not fulfill the conditions of their contract, he confirmed Xiao Dagen's words because he had not seen Xiao Dagen behave like Da, someone from the crowd in the background shouted. That he had found a ginseng flower at the same time others shouted, that Xiao Dagen's family would be enriched by selling plants. Hearing these words, he was very surprised, because this couldn't be happening since the experts Zhu hired told them that there is no treasure on the new two, and that they can't lie to them. He kicked his son at the same time, sending all the experts to the crouching hell of his father. Xu Yu's furious kicks started screaming uncontrollably and writhing in pain. Xiao Dagen stopped Uncle Zhu because if he didn't stop, no one would point it out. Then after that, he stopped her and immediately turned to face Xiao Dagen and told him to give him a ginseng root, stating that. He was the head of the village, and he was obliged to give him the treasure he found, adding that Xiao Dagen dug it from the hills of the village and the ginseng as the property of the whole village stood up from the ground. He confirmed his father's words, but Xiao Dagen wasn't his fault either. He pointed to the contract in Zhu Babai's hand, which was written in black and white that the new mountain Tao belonged entirely to men, including everything adjacent to it. After signing the papers, Zhu Pai started to deny what he heard, because Xiao Dagen had not transferred the money for the contract to him. But Xiao Dagen replied this, that he had already signed a contract, and if Zhu didn't follow this, then the man would just sue the bottom he obviously didn't like what he heard. Because if Xiao Dagen really demands the bottom, then they will have trouble. After thinking about Xiao Dagen's words for a while, he offered the man 30,000 people so that he didn't have to look for a buyer now. Xiao Dagen was proud, because at this moment Uncle Zhu agreed that the treasure was not his, but for Xiao Dagen who had completely surrendered to the man. He decides to give 30,000 at the same time in addition in cash, adding that he will be able to sell the route only for this price and that there will be no one who can be as generous as him. But Xiao Dagen rejects the offer because not everyone is that stupid. Xiao Dagen watched him become furious, but he still had to agree with Xiao Dagen turned around and started to leave with his son. When suddenly Xiao Dagen took his shoulder and thus stopped him adding that his rival did not fulfill the terms of the contract. They want to get away with it. She takes Xiao Dagen's hands off of her adding that she doesn't know anything about their contract. Luckily, Xiao Dagen was ready for the answer given above he used his powers, and seeing what was under the clothes, smirked at him. Xiao Dagen threatens the man that he will tell everyone what is under the clothes from which he is horrified that no one knows about it. Then, after that, Xiao Dagen said what was really on his mind at the moment against the red belt and black tights. He obviously didn't like what he heard, he was overcome with panic as thousands of punches passed through him all over his body. He stopped asking when he saw Xiao Dagen talking to his son. Xiao Dagen also threatened his opponent that he would take off his clothes. If he will not fulfill all the mandatory requirements then realize it, he will have a hard time, especially if his father finds out he was arrested. Then after that, with even greater panic, he was thrown into intense sweat his whole body trembled. His knees were clenched because if someone found out he wouldn't just be a laughing stock, he would be a realized scumbag of society. That nothing good will happen to him since Shadow's Juyukai has finally decided to make his move, poses and starts urinating in front of everyone like an animal. After listening to Xiao Dagen's orders, he started barking like a dog so that those around the team would understand who he was. When people saw and heard the man's actions, they started laughing wildly at him, saying that he has gone mad and exclaiming that children always take an example from your parents, 
The father, seeing what was happening, became much more angry than before. He screams loudly at you that he has disgraced their family and starts beating his son harder and harder. So he won't do this again. In conclusion, he ran away from his father with all his might, while running screaming at him while beating him. But after that, in a big house in the middle of the forest, something terrible was happening. There was the sound of a whip. And the unpleasant words of a fat, bearded man in a white t-shirt with a funny print in the shape of a blue rooster, and in pink trousers cursed loudly at his son, who covered his face with his hands and sobbed bitterly. He said that his sister ate chicken droppings because of Xiaodagen, and he got nothing for it. The man became increasingly angry because he had raised narrow-minded children. But suddenly, Zheng Xiangzhou and child were interrupted by a slender woman in dark clothing and golden robes. With bones on a head of black hair, she loudly asked what was going on here, and sent his son to look for Xiao Dagen. The man who was tired enough of the stormy bickering was glad of his arrival, and the man looked at his wife incomprehensibly. The woman said through her teeth, that no one dared to offend her children by sullenly threatening her husband, was immediately furious that this bastard had brought them so much trouble. So they have to deal with it now. He was about to leave the house when the woman stopped him. It's no good for him to make too much noise before getting rid of him. You first have to take the money. Woman. She started reasoning that when she went to the city to root for her older brother who held a high position in the city, and will deal with it soon. Then after that, his son, he told him to go to his uncle, so that he would find some lackeys, and they would intercept a man in town, and make sure that he gave them all his money. He wanted his brother to squeeze every penny out of Xiaodagen, and Kai shared everything with Uncle Yukai, instantly beaming with joy. Zhu Yu immediately thanked her mother in a sad voice, and Juba began to praise her for her sharp mind. But after that, to become his wife, she immediately ran to her uncle in the village of Xiaodagen's parents. Xiaodagen stood in front of the table holding a clean plate in front of him, simultaneously talking to his mother. After saying that he was all when he did, he added that he wanted to go to the new mountain too to find out what else he would do. Finding there, hearing this, the mother told her son, that he was there in the morning and it was very dangerous there, Xiaodagen in turn answered his mother, that the last time he went there he was in a hurry, and therefore he had to go back there again to decide what to do next with this mountain. After finishing the housework, Xiao Dagen was about to go out when his mother shouted at him to be careful there, and at the same time, I asked him when he would go sell ginseng for a while. Then Xiao Dagen shouted back that he would definitely be careful, and the next day he would go to sell the plant, probably making about a hundred thousand. The human saw her son running away, Zhang Zhu Ying was happy with her son because he grew up right before her eyes and continues to surprise her to this day. After reaching the Newtown Mountain, Xiaodagen was horrified to find a small number of people digging in front of him. Xiaodagen didn't understand why everyone standing in front of him had to be here since there were many poisonous insects and snakes on the mountain, why they risked their lives so much. But at the same time, Xiaodagen noticed a young girl in denim shorts and a pink hoodie among the crowd. However, it seemed like he was worried about something, and was talking to someone about it. It turned out that this girl clearly liked a psycho Donjang named Chiu Xia. It turned out that later Zhou Yu Yin had a dialogue with a woman who asked Ku Xia why she was covering up for Xiao Dagen. Because he had no one but Zhou Yu Yin turned out to have a good heart. Because he said that according to the contract, the mountain belonged to Don Zhen's family, and that they had no right to dig up their property. After not listening to the end, the angry woman interrupted Chiu Xia by saying that it was not hers. Then after that, business and he had better get out of here sometime later. Xiao Dagen approached the two of them and stopped everyone from working. Xiao Dagen just wanted to say that all of them were not welcome here because he was immediately interrupted saying that they had all just decided to help him loosen the soil. And now knowing this, Xiao Dagen had to be much more polite to them the man clearly didn't like the behavior of his fellow villagers. However, since there was no limit to their arrogance, they thought they could dig up the ginseng here and make money from it selling without making a loss from it. But if they continue with the same spirit, then everyone will soon die here because the poison is so much. So the blame would fall on Xiaodagen. 
How could he act in this situation? Xiao Dagen still decided to warn the people that they were in great danger because the mountain was not only full of poisonous substances, but also smoke, but they don't believe it. Besides, they decide that Xiao Dagen is just bullying them. The woman who talked to Chiu Xia at the beginning of the conflict started to chase after Xiao Dagen angrily added and added various statements to humiliate the young man. The people around them completely agreed with the woman who justified her words, said that although his family had returned all the money to the villagers, they still owed them money. Then what did he hear because he had nothing to answer? but immediately went to save Xiao Dagen. He stopped everyone in the neighborhood, thereby protecting Xiao Dagen from imminent defeat. Fellow male villagers began to rudely insult Zhou Yuyin, telling him all kinds of insults. Then at the same time, Xiao Dagen interrupted the vile ants who defended Kusia in return. He threatened the woman, saying that at her age it was unusual to start such a conflict but she in turn continued to behave more than before she came so close to Kazia that she was scared and trembling with fear, the woman clarified that Zhou Yuyin was defending Xiao Dagen. Just because he was afraid to stay in the girl, Zhou Yuyin was afraid of not finding anyone for himself. But Xiao Dagen at the same time grabbed the insolent woman's hand and said that he had no right to touch her. With his dirty hands squeezing the woman's wrist harder and harder, which became even more painful for her. At that moment, a scream came from somewhere behind them that Chou Xia something had happened to him. The man was horrified just seeing Zhou Yuyin. She was lying on the ground, leaning against a rock and screaming. Because of the pain in his leg, something had bitten him. Xiao Dagen immediately looked at the victim's leg and saw a large bite wound there quickly drawing conclusions. Xiao Dagen realized that he was poisoned by the scorpion venom of one of the inheritances. But the villagers didn't believe it was Zhou Yuyin's act, deciding that it was all a show for them all to go along with. As soon as Xiao Dagen came, Zhou Yuyin was immediately bitten by someone from the crowd confirming these words. Hearing the words above, Xiao Dagen became angry and no longer worried about the lives of his fellow villagers. However, just thinking about Zhou Yuyin's youth immediately interrupted the man saying that he was starting to feel dizzy. Xiao Dagen suddenly turned away from the crowd and turned to face Zhou Yuyin. He said that he would somehow find a way to cure it after carefully looking at it closely. Xiao Dagen realized that everything was bad because Zhou Yuyin was really injured by the poison. Scorpion Mehua Xiao Dagen. I concluded that if the poison spread throughout Zhou Yuyin's body and the outline of a plum blossom appeared then, and then turned red, there would be no one to help Zhou Yuyin use her power. Xiao Dagen checked the scene of Zhou Yuyin's defeat and realized that everything was still not that critical because the poison didn't have time to reach his heart. But a woman from the crowd suddenly confused Xiao Dagen's mind because she saw something not far from them. Everyone suddenly turned around and saw the same scarlet scorpion that injured Kusia. What he saw scared all the villagers, forcing them to flee the scene. However, out of fear, Xiao Dagen and Kusia were left alone. Xiao Dagen saw the same insect gather energy and shoot it at the poisonous creature, warning Zhou Yuyin to be patient. Xiao Dagen told him that he needed it to suck the poison out of his body. Zhou Yuyin looked at the man questioningly, but at the same time stopped him deciding that it might kill him. Then after that, Xiao Dagen assured him that he wasn't afraid of any poison and that he wouldn't get anything from it. Kiyuzia's very touching moment showed that Xiao Dagen took her leg without her permission, which made the man very embarrassed, because he was surprised, but then apologized and warned that he would start treatment now biting his lip to where the young man's defeat was starting to act. Then during this process, Zhou Yuyin remembered that after the death of her parents since then, no one had stood up for her, and no one would offer her help. After a while, Xiao Dagen finished his work, noting that there was no more poison in his body. Zhou Yuyin answered the man that he was fine, but he was so tired the man told him that this was a normal reaction of the body, because a lot of its energy was spent just fighting the poison. But after a while, Xiao Dagen saw that Zhou Yuyin had fallen asleep carrying him severed dungeon, that he needed to quickly become rich and win over Zhou Yuyin.
Then after that, it walked away. On the way, he saw a beautiful sunset. Xiao Dagen had fun while enjoying it as he rode along the road on his bicycle, sang a song while placing his hand on his chest. Xiao Dagen was waiting and couldn't wait to sell Jin Sang at a good price. Two hours later, Xiao Dagen was standing in front of the medicine pharmacy. Yesterday, the man searched for a good, good pharmacy on the internet and came across Big Pharmacy. The biggest pharmacy in the district is also the biggest medicine collection and selling place in all the district. Xiao Dagen went to Xiao Dagen's pharmacy to approach Dr. Shen Jinbing and told him that Xiao Dagen had very precious plants and it was therefore possible for them to go somewhere remote. Then, after hearing the man's words, the doctor was shocked because from the outside the young man looked so poor, and how could he have a worthwhile healing plan after finishing his thoughts? Shen Jin looked around and told Xiao Dagen to follow him. When he reached a hidden corner, Xiao Dagen asked the doctor if it was to open the place. The curious man asked him to show faster. That he needed what the man brought so he wouldn't waste his time, Xiao Dagen. At the same time he reached into his pocket and took out the ginseng. The doctor saw the precious plant immediately took the ginseng from the man for a more thorough examination. He started to ask Xiao Dagen more about where and when he found it. Xiao Dagen told him that he had found a root in the mountain yesterday and how much it could sell for the doctor hearing the words Xiao Dagen immediately thought. That the man was a redneck and knew nothing about plants he assumed Shenzhen decided to trick the man by saying that he was very lucky, but he damaged the lobes of the root and therefore the price of ginseng plummeted. Chief Xiao Dagen, because over the years, this ginseng the price mentioned above is too low. The cunning man warns the man that no one else will pay him, and if he does, then a maximum of 10,000 is the final price the doctor decides. That he was a stupid country boy with his help. He could be rich and go far from this place, Xiao Dagen squirts from hearing and demands to return the treasure he found. Nothing, in other words, Xiao Dagen will get nothing, no money, no benefits. Xiao Dagen was very angry, and the doctor saw the man's condition immediately decided to immediately get away from him and called security to help him. But after that, Xiao Dagen immediately reacted to Shen Zhenbing's action because he wanted to deceive the man. But the security was quick. He ran to Xiao Dagen, thereby preventing him from catching the imposter. But after running his hand through the crowd, Xiao Dagen still manages to catch the imposter with a rope. The guards immediately surrounded him to warn the man that if he didn't let the doctor go, he would have a lot of trouble with them. But Xiao Dagen suddenly grabbed his ginseng from Shenzing and threw the doctor on the floor. One of the guards shouted that Xiao Dagen had attacked a man, and everyone they stopped him immediately. The experts around confirmed the above words. Then after that, one of the guards swung a staff at the man from behind. But Xiao Dagen reacted quickly and avoided the attack before Xiao Dagen Don Cheng didn't have a chance to try his strength. And therefore, he decided to test his skills on those swinging guards again. But Xiao Dagen dodged again. But this time, she had answered the man in kind. He swung and hit the guard at the point of pain, causing him to writhe in pain and fall to the floor. Seeing that their commander is defeating the other guards, decide to attack Xiao Dagen together. But the man also didn't miss out. He managed to dodge every blow aimed at him defeating all his opponents. He also grabbed the leg of one of them and started spinning it around himself, thus creating a whirlwind of people scattering everyone in all directions. After finishing the fight, Xiao Dagen picked up Dr. Shen from the floor and asked the old man about how he dared to trick the man who took out a black shiny ball from his chest. Xiao Dagen decides to feed him to this cheater. It turns out later that the ball he gave the doctor was one of the poison pills that Sayo made in her spare time. Irresistible desire, his whole body itched happy with the effect Xiao Dagen said that he called this pill 10,000 insect bites. Adding that the name spoke for itself, Scratched his whole face, the lying doctor started to beg Xiao Dagen to give him the medicine that promised never to deceive others. The doctor is damned. So he started apologizing to Xiao Dagen, thus loudly in front of everyone shouting that he had tried in vain to adapt the ginseng that the man found. However, Xiao Dagen is on the other hand a bad person who attacks their co-workers. Zeal laughs at Dr. Shen saying that there is no cure for the pills. But at this time, a bearded man came to the main hall with a shiny ornament around his neck. 
The employees saw their boss immediately startled, as well as the unsuspecting Xiao Dagen clearly dissatisfied. The boss didn't like the pharmacy guard lying on the floor, but he immediately asked what was going on here. They all got up from the floor, and one of them went to his boss and said that the guy in the tracksuit had organized the pharmacy a bit of hype, beating up the doctor and guards. But it turns out later that the doctor working the shift is a brash con man who in turn is trying to take the ginseng for himself. The owner of the great medicine dispensary immediately reacted, adding that if the people in the district found out, then the bad rumors about the dispensary would be dispelled, which could damage the institution's reputation. But after that, at the same time, this small business pharmacy owner started asking about Dr. Shen who he was and why he did what he did. One of the employees nearby said that Dr. Shen was a doctor who came from a nearby village to earn money, and this is his first day on the job. The man immediately started asking the staff about the doctor's whereabouts now to question him, but the employee immediately exclaimed that he had fled to the nearest hospital. The boss immediately gave orders to the guards to find the imposter brazen and take him back to the pharmacy, but in the meantime the boss will try to negotiate with Xiao Dagen. After a while, the man apologized for the inconvenience caused by the doctor promised. That this won't happen again in the future? Xiao Dagen said that the man didn't need to apologize, because it wasn't his fault to add that he didn't want to start a new conflict just with the pharmacy director. After saying the above words, Xiao Dagen turned around and had already started to leave when the owner of the company stopped him to look at the ginseng that the young man who had brought said that if the conditions of the plants were really good, then he would pay generously for them. The man decided to agree, and they went to the office together. The head was already sitting at the table. The man managed to brew a cup of tea for him. Xiao Dagen and started inspecting the ginseng roots carefully. Under the magnifying glass, Xiao Dagen decided to warn him beforehand that he would not sell it for 30,000, and if he offered this amount, then they would have nothing more to talk about. Hearing the price mentioned by the young man really surprised him. Since his roots really weren't worth the money, the director immediately reassured the wary Danjang Xiaodagen that he had nothing to worry about, and that he conducts his business honestly without leaving his customers with doubts and doubts. Xiaodagen risked adding that if this was the case, then he should have seen that the plant wasn't even 100 years old, and that he should know the true price. After completing a thorough inspection of the goods, the man offered 200,000 yuan. After hearing Xiao Dagen's final price, he was so shocked that sweat was pouring down his forehead because he had never seen that kind of money lying. The man eases the man's suffering by the fact that the price may be slightly understated because the broken lobe of the root says that 200,000 is the current limit. Xiao Dagen agreed with the buyer and agreed to 200,000 yuan in one payment. Then after that, they immediately exchanged numbers to transfer funds to the electronic wallet, seeing the payment complete. Xiao Dagen swallowed his saliva. Because there is now so much money in his account. But the man is suddenly interrupted by the doctor, who bravely bursts into the office, screaming. That a terrible disaster had occurred, the director immediately got up from his chair and began to ask the doctor about what happened there. But after that, the doctor, who was panting, answered that it was better for the boss to see everything with his own eyes, because something happened to a man wearing glasses and a white medical coat entering the office that was clearly visible to him. That he was in such a hurry that he fell from his feet, from running. Then Xiao Dagen and the second man in the suit turned to him worriedly. Then he asked what made him rush. The young man said that someone claimed that his daughter had gone crazy because of drugs. Angry, bearded man capable of speaking such nonsense. He demands to be brought immediately. The three of them go to the corridor hearing the girl scream. The girl's high-pitched voice sounded whiny, as if she was throwing a tantrum Xiao Dagen. The two men peeked from the corner watching as the girl surrounded by paramedics hugged a trash can asked, why doesn't his mom take him with him and says she misses him so much they try to calm her down? But he didn't react to anyone. A man in a suit with black hair and a mustache angrily and anxiously speaks to Boss Wang saying that this started happening to his daughter 
after taking medicine bought from him at the pharmacy. Then the girl was still crying hard, hugging it, more and more, and called her mother Wang, frantically carrying her regrets about Master Jang's daughter's condition, and asked permission so he could examine it. She sits next to him carefully takes his pulse on his arm, and explains that the reason for her condition is not in the medicines bought at her pharmacy. Zhou Yuyin's father heard the words above grab the director by the collar and violently started yelling at him, adding that people would do anything to escape the responsibility that was increasingly threatening pharmacy owners at the time, as the sick girl fell to the floor. Where Xiao Dagen reacted quickly and didn't let him touch the floor, saying that might faint. Then Xiao Dagen immediately noticed the small tumor on the girl's back, that he was bitten by a polar black widow. The man screamed that he was under the influence of poison and that he should not be helped immediately. Otherwise, he would not be without fatal result. The young man said that he should be given a separate room so he could start treatment. Then the girl's father asked, Xiao Dagen, how did he gain such trust? Everyone, including the director and the girl's father, started to doubt the man's strength. Because even the pharmacy owner couldn't recognize the girl's illness, the man asked Xiao Dagen to stay away from his daughter. However, Xiao Dagen told him that he would not leave or else Zhou Yuyin would die. Naime's father ordered one of the guards called Ifu to deal with the man. He took Xiao Dagen's shoulder and said, He had to let the girl go, otherwise it will hurt him. But Xiao Dagen reacted quickly and took the man's hand threw him over the top. Himself, everyone around him must not have expected such a change as he looked a very strong and muscular man. Then, after that, the pharmacy owner asked Xiao Dagen not to make more trouble adding to the treatment of this type of disease. Is no joke, especially, since he can only make things worse. Xiao Dagen replied to the man that he felt he had to save him. Otherwise, they would not escape from her death, the girl's father said. That the man must bear a great responsibility. But Xiao Dagen interrupted the man worried about his child, asking if they had gray-white spiders in the man's house, hearing the man's words, and was shocked. Because they really have prophets like that at home. Then he noted that this spider very rarely appears in places with cold climates. He noted that few people survive the bites of these insects. After these words, Xiao Dagen immediately touched the girl's defeat spot and took out a thin silver thread along with a spider. Then, after that, the people from the crowd who saw the bug immediately exclaimed, That man was right, Xiao Dagen started to say that after the bite of the black widow pole, symptoms such as fever, excessive sweating, and hallucinations started and eventually lost consciousness. And someone's death, the man adds that an ordinary person cannot heal a girl, but at the same time he is interrupted by the girl's father, who swings the spider with his hand and throws it from Xiao Dagen's hand. Then the man threw the bug on the floor, screaming, that this creature cannot be kept in the man's house, suddenly pushes him away, saying that the thread should not break. Because after a bite, the black widow connects itself and the victim with a spider thread that cannot be broken, otherwise the poison will disappear. After that, the victim could die. What he heard horrified the man asked at the same time, Xiao Dagen had helped the man to tell the director that she would need a separate room and a silver needle. The girl's father ordered his bodyguards to eat food to go look for silver needles. The guards immediately ran for the needles and the rest went to the remote room for the director's surgery to unbutton his blouse so that he would not interfere with the treatment. While the grieving father watches this standing before them. After a short time, the man finally handed over a pack of needles which he effectively unwrapped on the weight from which everyone in the room was amazed by what they saw. After taking out all the needles, Xiao Dagen directly stuck them into Zhou Yu Yin's back after performing acupuncture. The guy used his superpower, which the director was so surprised that he didn't even do it. Realized that Xiao Dagen had internal Kai acupuncture technique when he realized himself the head of the pharmacy told his father to look at his skin. Finally, the young doctor examines the patient's body and confidently concludes that he was really cured. His father immediately approached him, asking if he was okay. The savior begins to contemplate that last time he saved her, and this time he helped this young girl, adding that he will soon master all 10,000 poison techniques. Then after that, he asked himself if he needed to use poison himself 
to strengthen his skill came to his senses, probably saw Xiao Dagen in front of him, from which he immediately blushed and smacked his savior's face. He said that he was a pervert. Zhou Yuyin's father began to calm him down because Xiao Dagen was his savior. But after that, he asked her to apologize to Xiao Dagen, and the impudent girl shouted at her father, because Xiao Dagen stripped him naked, and he still needed to apologize to him. Xiao Dagen snapped at the girl from what he heard, said that he did not even expect gratitude from her, but such an attitude towards his own father was inexcusable. Then after that, the girl was angrier at Xiao Dagen than before, and shouted at him that he did not ask to save him, and it would be better if he died with dignity without letting anyone touch him. The man went into a beast rage and clearly wanted to punch Zhou Yu Yin for his words, but the apothecary director stopped him telling him to calm down and that it was none of their business anymore. After settling the disagreement, the man asked to follow him so that he will give them medicines for prevention. Then finally, after leaving the office, people gathered around admiring what they saw. As the girl stood on her feet fully recovered, the impression came to everyone from the crowd because Xiao Dagen the patient really managed to help. But he never thanked his savior for his care. He just walked past people without showing a single drop of joy on his face. Then the father did not like his daughter. He stopped in front of the man saying that his son had a naturally stubborn character. So he apologized for all the trouble caused to Xiao Dagen and thanked him for his help and rescue. The girl at the end of the man's short dialogue gave Xiao Dagen his business card and also asked where Xiao Dagen came from. Then the man gave his name, adding that he was from Deji Village, leaving the father once again apologizing and saying that at the next meeting. He would definitely take his daughter with him, so that he would express his gratitude to him. After he finished, the man chased after his son, and the owner of the Great Medicine Pharmacy approached Xiao Dagen said that if he did not come to the rescue, then with the good reputation of the institution, it would be possible to say goodbye. Wanted to thank the young man, somehow the man offered the man to eat. But Xiao Dagen said that it was time for him to go, and at the next meeting, he will gladly accept his gratitude in front of him. At the end, adding that he had to leave now following the man away on his bicycle, the pharmacy director shouted that if Xiao Dagen had any problems, he could safely ask for his help. Having traveled quite a distance, Xiao Dagen received a notification on his phone about receiving a transfer in the form of 50000 to his personal account. Then after that, from that test. Relieved, the man raised his hand and exclaimed that he had worked hard and received his hard-earned money. But at one point, Xiao Dagen was driving past one of the alleyways, and noticed a large crowd of people and their words that someone was being beaten there. A voice also followed from there saying that charity cannot be replaced with tears. A moment later, Xiao Dagen recognized this voice. The crowd pushed against the assembled onlookers, while the pink-haired Zhou Yuyin shouted loudly and told someone to calm down, and raised the public humiliation revealed in front of the guy whose star was a girl who liked the guy there was a broken phone lying on the road. And from Xiu's scream, it could be understood that it was his. On the asphalt in front of him sat a blonde girl who was crying and had bruises on her face from Zhou Yu Yin's punch, trying to justify himself because he really accidentally broke the phone of a grumpy person. But he didn't seem to want to hear it hysterically wiping him off with his jacket, lifting him to his face level, continuing to scream. The girl had to get her money back for the broken things, and that she wasn't going to get off that easily. Then, he didn't notice that Xiao Dagen was already familiar with him. In the crowd who loudly shouted that he was releasing and, not even touching the Quercusia again for a moment, everyone froze, glaring at the man he immediately let go. Girls covering paralyzed girls suffering from screams. His old acquaintance stood silently beside him. Xiao Dagen arrives, he told the rude woman to leave. After confirming that Chiu Xia everything is fine with Chiu Xia, Xiao Dagen finally drew attention to the wound. His cheeks immediately became angry. He turned his head and asked what he and his lackeys were doing. Why Xiao Dagen meddles in his own business. In his mind convinced himself that because of the disease has passed. Then he couldn't be afraid of the man he decided to place. 
pressure on him by saying that he is pathetic. Because Xiao Dagen after university he couldn't find a job and returned to the village to raise chickens. And now that he thinks of himself as Xiao Dagen, what a joke. Amidst the crowd gathered around the words started, he smirked, adding that the idiot in front of him had broken his phone. And is she bad for wanting to take money from him for trespassing? Xiao Dagen gritted his teeth, saying that if Zhou Yu Yin wanted to feel the unbearable itch caused by his illness again, then she could arrange it again. Zhou Yu Yin immediately became flustered, showing it with all her looks. Then he threatened the man with his father's anger. But it didn't work on Xiao Dagen. He had his trump card up his sleeve for such a case, considering how he ate chicken poop and how his brother was a dog. Xiao Dagen asked if he really should be afraid of his father's anger, or if he should be afraid at him. The man changed his expression to cough and smoothly moved closer to the point he asked me to tell you about. He charges the phone so he himself pays for the damages hearing the man's words trying to stop him. Then after that, by saying that he shouldn't do it. But he assured her that everything was fine. She decided that the dojang just wanted to show off. In front of a girl, he shouted, that his phone was of limited edition and therefore Xiao Dagen owed him 18,000 humans whether he could afford such extravagance. But Kusia, looking at him in astonishment, denied it, because she saw with her own eyes such a telephone cost only 4,000. The man asked again, as if with a mockery how much his friend cost. He assured that the phone was worth 18,000, said that if they didn't believe him, they can safely leave. Then he asked the shop owner for the original amount, which Xiao Dagen agreed to, and only transferred the money to him. The girl who didn't expect this was stunned. The man didn't even blink an eye when he mentioned the amount. Zhou Yu Yin smiled in satisfaction because the damage had been compensated. Then there was no reason for him to stay here. The young man called out to him, telling him to stop his insults. Because it's not just about the phone now, it is necessary to calculate how much he owes her now. He was shocked because Zhou Yu Yin had taken pity on them. How dare they? Then tell him about it. The guy explained that the call fee was paid and no problem with that. But he has hurt Kusia, so she has to reimburse the medical expenses. The smirking man mentions the number 1,800,000 people who have not dispersed is a surprise robbery. In broad daylight, some of the shoe students also didn't stay away screaming that Xiao Dagen had gone crazy. After all, he had hit Zhou Yuyin only a few times, and thus, why didn't the man take it upon himself? With a flick of her hair, she turned angrily and left through the crowd. People pushed everyone in a row where Xiao Dagen smirked, said that if he doesn't give her the money, then she won't expect him to think. That the silver needle was finally of use to him, he immediately used his strength from which he gave up. Due to the pain in his leg, he fell to the ground. The people around immediately exclaimed that Zhou Yu Yin was expected to fall on her knees. Then his legs wouldn't obey him and he immediately realized that it was Xiao Dagen's fault. After asking the man about what he did to her, Zhou Yu Yin only heard that with the help of a needle. The young man blocked the nerve endings of his lower extremities. The stupid girl heard Xiao Dagen's words and immediately started pulling out the needles with her own hands. But he was quickly stopped by her and said that the needle should not be removed. But if not, he risks losing his legs forever. But if he followed the young man's instructions, then he would remove the needle without the consequence of him being arrested. Scared, and at the same time he started begging for forgiveness and for Xiao Dagen to let him go. The man says he can let go any time. But it would be unfair to Kusia if she doesn't answer for what she has done to her. Then after that, the impudent girl clearly didn't like what she heard, and she gripped Xiao Dagen's jacket tighter, which made him react. The injured girl came to the main, she told Xiao Dagen that everything was fine, adding that he should not be forced to apologize to her. The man replies Kusia, noting he is a good person. But Zhou Yu Yin was an ugly snake who sought only one benefit everywhere and from everyone, and therefore she had to be taught a lesson. Finally, after finishing, Xiao Dagen turns to Yunyan saying that Chou Xia can't hit him, and therefore he will do it himself. But after that, he wanted to say something to the man, but he only heard that it would be better for him to hurry because the needle had to be removed quickly. Hearing the words above, he snapped and looked at the ground lifting it up. 
Hands prepared for the blow, he swung with all his might and hid himself in the cheeks. He added that Zhou Yu Yin also apologized at the same time as Zhou Yu Yin dutifully obeyed Xiao Dagen's orders, then barely apologized to Cute. The man ordered Zhou Yu Yin to hit herself harder and faster, so that she wouldn't stop, she obediently listened to the young man and started screaming, that he is worse than an animal, and that it is useless for him to start begging. He is for his forgiveness. However, so that he would show mercy to her, forgive him, Zhou Yu Yin, for whose shoes are you sorry, Chiu Xia told Xiao Dagen to finish this performance. Zhou Yu Yin finished beating herself and removed her bruised hand, showing swelling from no less beating. Xiao Dagen's face told Zhou Yu Yin that they were done with this. But the bad thing is that man taught her manners, not her father. He said in a long and deep voice that she had done everything he had told her to do. When he was no longer angry with her, he asked her to restore sensitivity to his feet. But Xiao Dagen had just started. Went to take Chiu Xia with him. As if he didn't notice that you had asked him. From which both Zhou Yu Yin were shocked. But Chiu Xia still stopped the man from asking her about this leg of Zhou Yu Yin, confirmed by himself noting that Xiao Dagen had forgotten him. The man stopped and thought a bit about the answer Zhou Yu Yin said, that she had lied to him because she didn't really need his help, and he himself has the right to pull this needle out of his leg. Zhou Yu Yin obviously didn't like what she heard, and she wanted to yell at Xiao Dagen to insult her again. However, he suddenly had a stream of blood coming from his nose and finally lost consciousness out of the alley. Chiu Xia asked Xiao Dagen about how he managed to immobilize the leg. The man answered with the back of his hand that he was studying medicine at university, saying that he closed the acupuncture points. But to open it, he only needed to pull out the needle. The rescue girl admired this and thanked Xiao Dagen for saving him, adding that he would definitely return the money Xiao Dagen spent on his rescue. Xiao Dagen stopped him from saying that on the same day he sold ginseng and that he had enough money right now so he doesn't have to worry about a refund. Then after that, he changed the subject to ask Zhou Yu Yin. Why is he in town? He replies that he needs to fix his phone. But unfortunately, before she met him, Xiao Dagen said that he also urgently needed to buy a new phone, pointing to the shop just behind him. He suddenly grabbed her hand and took her to the shop to shop from where he was a bit lost. Not understanding the whole situation after a while, thinking the man had finally brought Chiu Xia with him to the shop. Then after that, a man in a striped suit was seen lighting a cigarette. A few moments later, they found out that it is not the first time he has smoked today. A few moments later, we saw a familiar face, Jubai's son, and a few other people around the car right in the middle of the road. Then he said, his sister called him recently he came in to tell him that Xiao Dagen was back and would soon find their group. The man from the man's side told him not to worry. He assured her that once they saw Xiao Dagen, they would immediately attack him. At the same time, the man became very angry because many mosquitoes were flying over him. He caught one of them and left. However, only drops of blood between his fingers. He started cursing Xiao Dagen for his only fault, that they stand here and feed all the mosquitoes to you, he assured his allies, added immediately. Once Xiao Dagen arrived, they would attack him with the whole crowd. Thus Xiao Dagen will answer to them for all the troubles caused by their family. He said that his mother gave them clear instructions, that they should follow it. After the words of this man, he pointed at the steel staff, there thereby confirming his words that they heard not far from them, it was a young man running towards them, one of their allies, he shouted, that he saw Xiao Dagen heading towards them. Meaning he was not far from hearing these words, he bowed down, he threw away his cigarette, and called his brother would come out in front of them, simultaneously took out his gun from behind his back. At the same time, Xiao Dagen rode his bicycle together with Chiu Xia. Then he sang to himself, How happy he was! But the man's mind was confused by the unexpected encounter in front of them was a group of five people with steel bats, led by him and his uncle. Xiao Dagen quickly reacted. Stopped abruptly in front of them, he starts a conversation with the man saying that Don Jing is Xiao Dagen. The great village asks if he sells ginseng, thus saying, 
that the plant was not his. But for Zhao Dagen, she confirmed the man's words also asked in response, that his sister Zhou Yuyin had told him this information. Xiao Dagen immediately started shining in reply, saying that your income from the sale of 250,000 yuan ginseng. And he noted that the plant was his not, and it would be better for him to start transferring all his money from his personal money to his account. However, it was in a good way, otherwise the gang would have nothing left but to ensure that Xiao Dugan does not return home. And if he did, it was already in the wooden box. Chiu Xia saw that the bandit with the steel baseball bat was very frightened. But he immediately calmed him down by saying, that everything will be fine, and he will overcome them because they are much weaker than himself. After hearing Xiao Dagen's evasive words, he told the man that the person who last said those same words was now in the hospital. After that, Chiu Xia prepared a phone warning the bandits not to threaten them, otherwise she would record everything on the dictaphone and send it to the police. Zhou Yuyin's reaction was happy about Su, and she said that no one should touch her so she could be alone with her. But Chiu Xia didn't like her saying that their entire gang disgusted him, adding that sooner or later they would get what they deserve from the words he told him, hurt bounce you. And she was furious with him saying that he thought too highly of himself. If he dared to call them disgusting after saying that the man was spitting at the girl who soiled his hood at the same time Xiao Dagen was defending her, and at the same time he was swinging with all his might against her with his fist, and directly hit his face right in the face. Then the impudent guy flew up to the car, saw how their boss flew in, and knocked him out with one punch. Then after that, the bandits were shocked. But before they knew it, their leader had completely destroyed the back of the minibus, so that parts and glass flew in all directions of the eye, as well as the rest of the group. It wasn't that he was surprised he was horrified by what he saw Xiao Dagen sprayed out so much so that the enormous energy left it like a flame, just much more intense and blue in color. Finally realized that the man had hit their boss. The bandits attacked evasively with the entire crowd to defeat it together. But Xiao Dagen can no longer be stopped. He simply turned around and looked back at his opponent, then at the same second running around. Everyone simultaneously scatters everyone who comes into his hands. A few seconds later, the man also stood in front of the four bandits. Only he was standing, but they were lying with their faces facing the ground. He was afraid of what he saw, because he didn't expect the man to win over Xiao Dagen. At the same time, it suddenly turned its head towards him from which it shuddered and got goosebumps from the surprise mixed with fright. Xiao Dagen slowly walked towards his final destination whole body. She was shaking and the man himself only looked pitying. He took a step and then suddenly ran away from Xiao Dagen with words for help while running away. He stepped on shards from the car window and so unsuccessfully he fell against the pavement with his teeth. Then a few teeth by now he'll know what it's like. But Xiao Dagen was in no hurry to help him. He sympathized with the man. However, on the contrary, he stomped on her back and added that he wasn't done with her yet. At this moment, the Butsu regained consciousness while sitting beside the car, suddenly for him the footsteps of the dungeon at his feet. He squeezed it with his shoe, which made the man very uncomfortable. The attacker had no choice but to start apologizing to Xiao Dagen. Then after that, he asked to take it off as well and added that he has a family. But Xiao Dagen only reacted negatively to this by saying that he wasn't interested, because she was asking how he was going to apologize to her. The man under the strong pressure on his legs begged Xiao Dagen to stop. Otherwise, he would break his leg. After saying that nothing came to the Dajin bandit who stopped hurting the man and used his own strength of 10,000 poison. Then, Xiao Dagen created poison and formed it in the form of his saliva. The poison landed directly on Baotizu's face, as if burning it from where the man started screaming uncontrollably writhing in pain. After finishing with the man, Xiao Dagen headed towards him who was lying on his back, not far from Xiao Dagen said, that he only noticed how the man was shaking in fear. Then Xiao Dagen asked why she was shaking so much and if she wanted to take her phone. Then, he replied to Xiao Dagen that he didn't need a phone. But Xiao Dagen said that he gave him a chance to take Xiao Dagen's phone for free pointing to his old cell phone. After finishing talking to Yutsai, Xiao Dagen threw his phone aside.
thereby sending him flying down from the bridge they were on straight into a large pool of dirty water. Xiao Dagen ordered the man to run to the phone and brought it to him, before he sinks with his tip. He started to deny it by saying that his mother had invited him to dinner, and that he should come home quickly, hearing these words. Xiao Dagen became angry and warned the young man. However, if he didn't, then it would meet Xiao Dagen's requirements. She should do the same with him. By shaking him, you are saying that he can't do it, showing that he can't even eat normally because he no longer has front teeth. Xiao Dagen didn't listen to the young man kicking him off the bridge right into the puddle he flew down, and finally, after touching a puddle, immediately started looking for the phone that Xiao Dagen had thrown away earlier. However, a few moments later, he shouted that he couldn't swim and looked like he was choking, and asked Xiao Dagen to help him approach Xiao Dagen, and said the man was literally suffocating and it wasn't time to help him out of the water, but she told him he would be able to hold on a little longer, so they won't do it. Worried about him leaving the yukai alone with water on the line, Xiao Dagen turned his head towards the Butsu, who was also lying on the ground near the car. But Xiao Dagen didn't pay much attention to this. He kicked the man's leg, telling him to get up from the ground faster, adding, so he didn't pretend to be dead. Otherwise, he would use poison on the bow again. The gang leader stopped the young man calling him, words full of affection, and asked him to listen to them, because he was the man who offered it to Xiao Dagen. However, men decide not to hear about her. However, only ordering him to grab his people and help them draw his eyes out of the frightened waters of the bow. But can only say that he would immediately carry out Xiao Dagen's order. Otherwise, the man will feel sick screaming to his gang to wake up about he lifted everyone off the ground and ordered him to get his eyes out of the water immediately. Then after that, his gang quickly got together and started carrying out orders. Moments later, he was dragged to dry land in a state of complete exhaustion, but with the same phone in his hand that was noticed. Xiao Dagen and quite surprised. Xiao Dagen said that he forgave him this time, but if it happened again, then Don Jing wouldn't be so good in the end. After he was done with, the man turned to him and told him, that if he didn't make more trouble, most likely his face would heal and nothing would be left on it. However, it would cross that person's path again. Xiao Dagen looked at them and after a little thought said, that everything is fine now it's turned around. Then he told Chiu Xia that they will leave here and ride the bicycles they left behind under the happy wishes of the bandits. He snuggled up to Xiao Dagen and asked him, when he gets really cool. So the man was very embarrassed and put forward the reason the man told him. Then after that, an old man taught him kung fu for several years at the university. Now the young man trains less. However, he asked him to wait a moment, and after a while, maybe he will become stronger. Zhou Yuyin asked Xiao Dagen what kind of kung fu could be so strong. He suggested that it could be a dragon. However, that Xiao Dagen said that it wasn't him adding that his style was much stronger than the dragon style. Then the young man decided to finish talking about this topic and said that they have almost reached their village and adds that he will definitely take her to his house. She agrees and he thanks her for the help given to him.